Hello, this is a review of the Buffalo Wireless Router, an N300 router model WHR300HP. Now what you get out of the box is what you see in front of me here. So basically, of course, you get the router itself with a shiny nice cover. The antenna is not attached, so minor assembly required. So you get your two antennas and you get a stand. So that's what we see here. It gives you mounting screws as well, so you could either mount it through the holes here and here and put it on a wall and you can attach the back of it here to that so it attaches to the wall or you can use this as a stand or of course you can just lay it flat. With either which way the stand goes it seems that you will have easy access to the ports on the side so some sometimes you know things that'll put a stand like this you know it gets harder to access. Of course it comes with your usual AC adapter. One thing that surprised me is it actually gives you a nice tiny little network cable. Next up they come with the manuals and it actually comes with a good amount of manuals um, that helps you understand what you do uh, quick and easy here. So here's the quick setup guide for portable devices and they give you a rundown for um, iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch and Android devices and they it's nice pictures I think it's pretty straightforward to follow. Next up you have of course quick setup guide for computers basically tells you again with the simple pictures. The first time you get this out of the box this comes taped to it so um, this thing's come taped to it and this is, gives you the initial setup card so every wireless modem is going to come with a default you know web address so this is the usual standard default address at least for Buffalo here um, that you're going to come with and a username and password and you are going to want to change these if you want your network secure remember everybody out there knows the default now with wireless routers a lot of people don't bother but for really secure basically this thing is constantly broadcasting its own SSID this is the thing that identifies your wireless network by this ID and if yours is saying hey I'm here I'm here I'm here I'm here or here you know with that SSID then all of your neighbors and everyone else can find your network and theoretically someone can try to hack into it but definitely pay attention if you want to block broadcasting your SSID out of the router itself later um, I choose to do that but when I set up wireless printers now I have to key in this you know a longer SSID all of these things you'll customize later and that's why they give you the back of the card the revised wireless settings Basically, you'll point your browser just at, at this thing here, and that's how you get to configurations of that. They give you a more detailed guide here, and lastly, they do give you a CD, your basic warranty card. This was kind of interesting, is uh, this device supports DDWRT. Now, the, basically what it calls it, it's professional firmware. I believe it's an open standard out there, and it tells you what it would support if running in the professional firmware mode. If you want to run the easy, user-friendly firmware from Buffalo, then it has a little bit more limited capabilities, still fairly normal in my experience for somebody who's going to be using an N300 router for their home. Now it's wireless N, but it is backward compatible to the previous generations of wireless technology. And they'll show you where it ranks among the current year's technology of wireless standards. This model is just a single band. This is 2.4 gigahertz. Then they start to double that on the 5 gigahertz channel and the 2.4 gigahertz channel. And here it is assembled. As you can see here, set up on the stand that I have here. Um, it, the antennas here can rotate around so you can position them um, as needed into whatever works for the best signal strength in your house. Remember, use the blue port is the one that connects to your DSL modem or cable modem and the rest of the ports are for wired devices if you don't want to use them in wireless mode. Like so, where the lower one connects to the back of my existing Westel wireless router that I'm upgrading from, but that's still my DSL modem. So that connects there and I can connect other devices like I have a n network printer that I'm going to connect to the back of there. Now where does the other side of this go? Um, remember, your existing modem this is going to have a similar set of devices where um, if you had a DSL, this was a phone line where it connects to your house there. Uh, basically just pick any open network port on the back of your existing modem that you want to connect this into. Now if you're going to try to access it from a wired connection uh, to get to the firmware on it, the, one of the things you're going to want to pay attention to is if you are connecting it to an existing DSL modem or cable modem, connect the wired connection to the back of this device directly to this one if you want to type in that IP address because otherwise 
um, this guy is going to be trying to dole out IP addresses and isn't going to let you get through this over to the, the hard-coded IP address that the firmware is running on. So plug directly into the back of this. Otherwise, without that, you're going to find that even though you type in the right address, you're going to get an error page. So once you plug your computer into the back end of this, that's when you will get an actual logon. And the first time you connect and log on with your credentials, you'll notice it'll go through a setup assistant and will automatically try to connect to the network and make sure things are set up for the internet. And it will walk you through what I told you before that you probably want to change your SSID and password. Um, so basically it'll run you through tutorial that helps you automatically go change those. And by default, we can see that it is running the DDWRT firmware that we see stated here. Now if you make changes to the SSID and whether or not it's being broadcast, so if you say don't broadcast my SSID and change it, um, I found that it didn't take effect right away even though I saved changes. But you can go under the administration tab here and scroll down to the bottom. Down at the bottom here there's reboot router. After I did that, then the new settings I made uh, took effect. Uh, before that, it did follow the new password at least that I had I had entered, uh, but with a new SSID and stop broadcasting it, I had to go to administration and reboot router. And now the results. Now immediately I'm seeing a drastic improvement in overall signal quality with this router compared to my old wireless G router that I had, my Westel router. Now, with running with a MacBook in about 30 feet away in the other room, uh, we found that with the old router with a 3 megabit per second DSL, we had a 1.33 megabit down and 0.64 megabit up. With the new router, this one here, it now goes 2.86 megabits down and 0 0.73 up. So 1.33 down, 2.866 down. 0.64 up, 0.73 up. Um, it is a noticeably drastic improvement. And now on my old router with my Xbox upstairs in another room with a closed door, I'm currently getting three bars, but we already know that from the speedtest.net example on the other computer, the quality of that signal is terrible. For the Xbox to work, I had to go to the NAT quality of service menu, UPnP, and enable here, the UPnP service and then save changes and reboot the router. Now with the Buffalo wireless router I get full signal. Um, this is great with the Xbox upstairs away from the router with a, with a ceiling and walls in between. It does toggle between three and four bars but the signal strength seems great. And now on the Xbox upstairs one thing that used to take forever was when I opened a video it would try to buffer and load and then pause. Now with the same three megabit per second DSL I can get a much better signal, we'll see who's left cursor over, play. Now it's still going to take a moment because it is 3 megabit per second DSL to buffer and get going, but it comes up pretty quickly and the picture quality turns out pretty nice pretty fast, which is on par with what I expect on the computer in the office um, right next to the router on the wired connection. By the way, on my work laptop, the VPN client worked just fine through this router. And now let's compare the actual hardwired speeds on the back to make sure that piggybacking on top of your existing modem that you don't get a slowdown. So on my existing modem, what I have here is 2.89 down and 0.72 up on a 3 megabit per second DSL. And now connected to the back of the new router, we see the speeds here as being 3 megabits down and 0.66 megabits up. Now this is a 3 megabit download DSL and a 0.75 megabit upload DSL. Now remember it's still piggybacking off this so it's really not going to go any faster than this guy can do so any difference we see here I think is just variance. The fact that the download speed ticked up and the upload speed ticked down. I do see it consistently ticking down a notch on the upload speed and rerun once more we get slightly different results. I can give you the gist of rerunning it again. Now for one more comparison with the old router compared to the new router on my laptop in an upstairs bedroom away from the router. What we get on the old router is 1.22 megabits download from the bedroom upstairs and 0.65 megabits upload. And now with the new router on the same laptop in an upstairs bedroom we get 2.9 megabits download 
and 0.73 megabits upload. Very close to the wired speeds. And by the way, the signal strength of both routers was pretty decent in the upstairs bedroom, but the throughput didn't match up. Thanks for watching the review.